everyone, and welcome to another podcast of Raw Conversations, where we will be sharing some insights and having some meaningful conversations with some amazing people in the nutrition and wellness space. Today's guest is Danielle. Uh, Danielle is the founder and CEO of Zestbox, a subscription food box company that features a collection of organic and non-GMO superfood delivered every month. She's also a cancer survivor and a graduate of Culinary Institute of America and a former premier personal chef for over 15 years. Welcome, Danielle, and thank you so much for thank joining us. Thank you so us. much for having me. This is awesome. Awesome. So I see your setup in the background. You have your zest box. <laughs> um, if you can kind of like give us, give everybody listening um, kind of a background about, a little bit about yourself mm -hmm. and then a little bit of what zest box is, and then we'll start from there. Thank you so much again. So I started Zestbox just as a mission-based idea. I, I'm a chef by trade and I love healthy food and I love to make it convenient for myself. And I was looking for it for other people uh, as well. And I just couldn't find it. Um, I have personal chef clients and I would make them all their meals, but then I would notice that they were really busy and that throughout the day they were eating junk. And so it was all well and good that we're meal prepping, but we're still, you know, in the car driving around and we're, we're grabbing something that we shouldn't have. So I always was spending so many, so many hours driving around in different markets, getting certain items. It wasn't like one market had everything and I was good to go for the week. So I kind of got tired of that. And when I looked for that service, it wasn't there. So I created it and I wanted to raise money for Alex's lemonade stand. Um, which I could talk about more later. Absolutely. Awesome. So um, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Um, why did you get into food? Why, why, was, um, why are you a chef? Well, I mean, why not? <laughs> I mean, I think like any good friend should be a good chef um, because then you're always just, you bring people together, you know? So for me, food always has a purpose, whether it's making you feel good or bringing people together during the good times and the bad times. Um, for me, I've had a little bit of both. Um, and so, you know, my background is I'm a personal chef, like I said, and I did graduate from the culinary school, but I did have um, about eight years ago, a uh, cancer diagnosis. And um, shortly after that, I relapsed. And so I had to do a really aggressive treatment and go through a stem cell transplant. So it was a really grueling um, two and a half years. And I had two little kids and I had to put my personal chef business on hold. Um, and then once I got back to understanding and respecting food, you know, like the one thing that everyone said to me when I was going through treatment was it's, it's hard to understand how someone so healthy could get cancer. But the way that I answered that is it's not because I, that's not the reason why I got cancer. It was the reason why I was able to fight cancer. I was able to fight it because I always ate well. I ate well during diagnosis. And more importantly, I always stayed positive. So I thought that that would be something that I want to put together in a box, which is what Zestbox is. It's really creating that motivational feeling every month and healthy food and just put it all in a box and send it out with love to like all these families. So it's really special to me. Every box is like all these yellow, these yellow, the sea of yellow boxes. And I just know that each family, you know, is going to open it up like Christmas morning and just like get excited because I keep all the, um, the collections a secret. So they don't know what's in it. They don't know what the themes are. Um, and so it's like really fun to just see all the kids kind of, you know, grab it, like what they want first, what they want dibs on first before their parents do. So it, that's been really nice to see that. No, that's just like, I, I think that's the, probably my most favorite part is that it's, it's a surprise. <laughs> like exactly. Most boxes you pick what goes in it. Exactly. Um, you're not sure you want to pick because you're like, oh, I don't think this one's going to be, these things are going to be healthy, but you're already choosing all of the healthy options right. and making it a surprise. So it's like Christmas that you don't have to second guess what's in the box. So exactly. And I found too, like I asked in the beginning, I asked the subscribers, I said, do you want to know or do you want to be surprised? And they actually all said they want to be surprised. And I think that's good because there's plenty of 
uh, product in there that I've even had family, friends, strangers, whoever, and they've reached out and they said, I would have never tried that. But because it was in the box, I tried it. You know, now I'm having coffee with uh, lion's mane mushrooms, you know, or I would have not ever, I don't even know what chia seeds are, but now because you added it into the box, now I'm having it for the morning. So I feel like if you show someone what's in there, they might just say, yeah, no, I'm good. I'll wait till the next month. But I think because they have that opportunity to see like what it's all about. And then they say, okay, well, let me try it out. Then they love it. So it's been really good positive. Oh, I love that. That's like the, it creates the, you know, the, the element of education of like something, you know, a lot of us get kind of in our comfort zones when it exactly. comes to grocery shopping and, mm-hmm. and picking foods. And um, this is kind of like a forced way into it, but it's also like an easy way into it because you already know what it tastes like. You already I kind of take the foolproof out of it, you know, like, cause I would, I know that when I would go to the markets, I would randomly go down the natural foods aisle and I would buy like four different kind of protein bars. I would find different flours and half the time I was wasting my money because I thought they were going to be good, but then they weren't. And so I think that sometimes is why people will just revert to what's comfortable instead of wanting to embrace something that they don't know of, that they're not familiar with. Maybe they didn't have hemp hearts growing up. You know, I mean, I know my, my family, my mom and dad would have never even, you know, wanted to buy that, but I feel that I'm giving that as a good example, that opportunity to my children. So you're just kind of setting each generation off on a better foot. I love it. I love it. Um, I actually, I'm just going to pause for one second. Okay. My team's going to kill me. They're like, what are you doing? Just you, you stay one second. I actually just realized that my my laptop is dying and I got to get my charger. Okay. Thanks, Kyle and Jamie. <laughs> um, all right. So, okay. So um, that's awesome. I think that a lot of times, um, you know, people, um, you know, it's kind of like kind of goes into epigenetics when you're not growing up with something, right. you don't want to try it. You're most likely not going to like it because it's not used. Your your palate isn't used exactly. to it. Exactly. Um, so the fact that you're kind of like. You know, and also if it's at your house, you're going to eat it and you're going to try it, right? Because you're not going out of your way to spend the money on it separately. So you're really kind of, you're kind of shaking things up in a lot of different ways. And I'm sure people, um, you know, it just brightens their day. And of course, I'm just see, you can see the box in the background. I'm just smiling, yeah, looking at it. Right, so- exactly. I know. That's what, that's my vision. Um, and then my, um, so in, once I was diagnosed, I, like I said, I got back to work. I had two little kids. So I wanted to get back to life and just kind of regain what I, in my opinion, like the time that I lost. And um, then when my nephew was diagnosed with neuroblastoma at four months old, that's when this like light bulb went off. I, I, I went from wanting to know nothing anymore about cancer. I didn't want to talk about it, think about it. I just wanted to get back to life. But then when he um, was diagnosed, I felt super helpless because at that moment I realized what this little baby was being asked to go through and it, it just makes you kind of numb. And so I felt helpless and I just wanted to do something. So that was the reason how Zestbox came about. So I wanted to figure out a way to raise money, raise awareness uh, about neuroblastoma and, um, and just more importantly about research because uh, pediatric cancer only gets 4% of federal funding wow. out of all the cancer research. So it's really important for us to do our part and whenever we can. And I, I chose Alex's lemonade stand because um, Alex actually had neuroblastoma herself. She was diagnosed um, 12 years ago, 20 years ago, she's been passed. But the reason why um, I chose Alex's lemonade stand way before even my nephew got sick, I just wanted a fun way for my kids to 
feel proactive in the whole cancer world. I didn't want them to always think something negative about cancer. Like if they see someone or hear someone, I want them to feel motivated and empowered that they can, as best we can in this crazy world, have some help and control and feel like you're doing a little bit. So I wanted them to learn that from the beginning. So we would always host lemonade stands. And then, like I said, when my nephew got sick, it just kind of all came together. You know, my love of food, understanding how, how important it is to eat well and to start from day one, you know, as like little kids to when we're adults, like we're not gonna start at 40. You know, it's, I mean, you can, and that's awesome, but you wanna always try every generation to get better and better. So that was my idea. And I just wanna bring a little motivation and kindness and pay it forward every single month. So it's been such a blessing. I, I love it very much. So amazing. So what year did you start Zestbox? I started in January of this year. So I thought, yeah, let me start right before pandemic and um, in the middle of like craziness. Um, but you know what? I feel like it's now more than ever. We need to focus on our immune system and focus on eating well and have some, have something just delivered to you, you know, because you're, you're really not shopping anymore. And more importantly, I'm not spending time in the aisles like I used to. I, I don't want to be, you know, hours on end looking at labels while I'm in the store with the mask on. I just kind of want to get in and get out. I mean, most of the time I deliver too, but this is an opportunity for you to learn about new products, but more importantly, supporting other businesses that are doing such great things. Um, that's what I put in the box. It's not these like, I mean, yes, there'll always be these like larger companies, um, but they have to have a mission-based reason why they're, you know, what their products are and what their purpose is for the company that they give back. But I focus on small businesses. I, I want to, they will not, they, they go in it for the right reason. They're not going to, at least that I've met, you know, I really try to talk to many of the companies and I try to learn why they started the product. What are the ingredients? Where are they sourced? Because I know that they're going to take it and run with it. They're not going to try to cut corners. And, and I, that was like one of the reasons why I absolutely loved your company because I knew just speaking with you, how educated you are and, and where your, you know, the products are sourced and why more importantly, they're sprouted and all that. And so I just wanted to learn more from you, but I wanted to bring that into the box and, and to, you know, educate others of why it's so important and what we're putting in our bodies. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. And we were so excited that we got to be in Zestbox. So um, mm -hmm. We actually put our strawberry plum chia pudding in your Zestbox. Um, so kind of give us a little highlight of, I guess, the criteria that of any of any product that's going to be delivered mm -hmm. in your boxes. What's what is what's the criteria? Mm -hmm. um, and I guess what um, what is your how do people get involved if they if they want to try out Zestbox? So you can go to my website, uh, myzestbox.com, and you can choose a small or a large. We have a Zestful, which is our large box, and we have our Zesty, which is a little box, and we also have Zest Free, which is gluten-free. And you can have it one time, or, you know, and just try us out. You could send it as a gift, um, or you can do it monthly. So we also have other options too, like bi-monthly or whenever. But um, you can prepay for three months or six months and save, which is the best because then it just kind of foolproof just comes to you. But um, so you could do it monthly or just once. That's awesome. And so all of your products are organic and non-GMO. Yes, and non-GMO. Absolutely. Yes. And I try to make sure that um, not only is the company um, saying and doing what they are putting on the labels, you know, like a lot of times I'll find certain things on their website. And then when I am looking at the product, it's, it's not, not matching up. And so, you know, and I think you kind of take that for granted. You're just assuming that that's what they're, you know, so I just, I take those extra steps to make sure that if it's something that I would want to consume, I would give it to my children. I, you know, I'd give it to my, my nephew. Um, so they have to be organic and non-GMO, absolutely uh, clean, minimal ingredients, not anything that you can't understand or, or say. Um, and, and, uh, sustainably sourced, you know, does it, does it need to be something that you would not want to give it to yourself or any, you know, I mean, it has to be something you feel confident enough to try. Right. And, you know, especially being myself in, in the food, as a food manufacturer, there's like a 
sea of products out there, um, especially the last few years um, mm -hmm. with, you know, just the whole plant-based, you know, movement in the, in the vegan movement forward, which right. is awesome. But, you know, that's kind of where it's unfortunate where you see a lot of the like healthier products or the vegan products mm -hmm. also being very processed and, and flooded with a lot of these um, processed ingredients that you can't right. pronounce and um, that have gone through m like many, many levels of, of processing um, and extract. Yeah, they've just been stripped and, and extracted. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. Um, but everything in your box, you know, is intelligently chosen by you right. because it, it because it's good for the human body. And so I think that people have that extra confidence um, that they can, you know, just get it and eat anything in it and kind of feel that little, that little surprise, um, which is awesome. And that's kind of gets into my next point, which is like how, you know, this is Zestbox is I think one of the best ways to get excited about eating healthier options. Right. Right. Um, but what is your experience with when, you know, when people say I, I want to eat healthier in general, like what are some things, and you were a chef, and so um, my background was um, not as, I wasn't culinary, you know, trained as, as you were, so I just kind of stumbled upon it based on passion, but um, I think that's one of the most difficult things is, like, when you want to eat healthy, and you're just like, oh, I really want this dish, and um, right, right, how do right. you, how do you, you know, excite people about wanting to eat healthier? So it's, it's a little bit of a, it has to be about simple, it needs to be simple, so it's almost like foolproof, you don't want to, it, overwhelm someone so much that they're just, they just check out before you even finish talking. Right. Uh, so it needs to be simple. It really needs to be convenient. So that's foolproof because you're more likely to constantly go back and become, a, it becomes a lifestyle and a routine if it's easy and if it's simple, if it's convenient. So that's the whole purpose of it as well. I wanted it to be foolproof, something that just like shows up at your door. Um, but any, even it, just anything in a lifestyle, you need to have it be um, consistent. So that's why I meal prep, I tried meal prep. I mean, I'm not perfect by any means. That's why I created this. Um, but you try to meal prep because then you are limiting those times when you can uh, make those, you know, maybe not so great choices. Um, and then also I don't want to look for products like when I'm hungry, you know, so I'm always going to try to let, plan out the day before I leave for the day so that I'm not going to plan or make a decision because I'm starving. Um, and then also I realized too, when I was stressed or just lack of sleep or my immune system, I, I crave things that wouldn't be so good for me. So I try with the, with the box to add in chocolate chip cookies, but maybe have veggies and fruit in them. Or I try to add in, um, you know, yes, it's taco night, but they're clean, like five ingredient, like spices. And, you know, it's, so I'm trying to find ways that it has to be a balance. It can't be all or nothing. So if you find familiar foods, but then find cleaner versions of them, you're more likely to be wanting, you know, to be open enough to try it and then be more willing to be consistent with it. So that's why I try to add in like veggie chips or cookies. So I don't want to do too much of them, but you can't just add in just chia seeds and, and oats and spr you have to have a little bit of everything mm -hmm. so that it becomes practical and it right. becomes a lifestyle uh, because you know sometimes you do just want a cookie or sometimes mm -hmm. you are at the movies or maybe would have been a uh, hundred years ago and um and you wanted to have um something healthy to snack on. But now we have like egg white, egg white curls, you know, things like that. So it's just my idea that you're going to take the everyday moments and just make them as practical and convenient as possible. Like nothing's foolproof, but every day, if you tackle something, then every day you'll get farther. Like I, I first started with the, the dirty dozen, you know, making sure that I focus on the produce. And once I, that became a routine and easy, then I went to my skincare. Then I went to household cleaning products. Then I went to um, flowers and sugars and learning the whole world about that. You know I mean? It's, it's super overwhelming, but if you break it down, then it becomes manageable and it becomes a lifestyle. So that's, that would be something that I've done that I would recommend for sure, just so it's not overwhelming. Right. No. Yeah. I think that's definitely important. I think um, that's one of the things that it's like information overload. Where you right. Exactly. Down. You're like, Oh my God, everything that I touch all day is bad for me somehow. Right. <laughs> and right. You panic and you're just like, Oh, 
Um, but exactly. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, so when you were going through your, um, through your treatment and through your diagnosis process, um, you know, were you kind of guided to, to kind of have healthier lifestyle choices or was that something that you decided for yourself? What was I that decided for like? myself. I actually, um, I was quite surprised to be honest because I did ask many doctors, you know, should I take these supplements? Should I do vitamin therapy? Should I do um, all organic? Should I stay away from soy? Should, you know, I, I definitely asked because anything that I heard, I wanted to try. Um, you know, there was a point in time between my first cancer diagnosis and waiting for the results um, for my second diagnosis that they thought, well, it could be inflammation or the cancer could be back. And during those three months of, you know, really stressful waiting, um, you know, knowing, okay, what foods limits or, or gets rid of inflammation in the body. And so I asked them, what do I do? And they really, you know, I'm, they didn't, they didn't have that, like, here, this is what you should do. So it's all about really being an advocate for yourself mm -hmm. and constantly researching, which is really my purpose also with this, is constantly educating others because if I'm a cancer survivor and went through treatment, if I'm a chef and went to a culinary school and I've always been healthy, but there's so much to still know and learn, I could just imagine how overwhelming it is for people that didn't have that path maybe that I did. So I feel like if there's these little snippets of things that someone can learn, then, then that's great. But um, so I, so for three months, I ate pureed uh, asparagus for three months every day, because that's one of the things that I heard. It didn't work. I was super inf like not, not inflamed at all. Um, you know, obviously my cancer did return, but the point is, is that I do really focus on anything that I can do. My first option would be, would be food, you know, or would be something that I can control or consume um, first and educate myself. Right. And I think um, that's one of the difficult things is, you know, everybody is, everybody's so different. Right. And right. so there's just there's so many compounding sense. factors of like, how you were raised and all, all exactly. these, all these epigenetic factors that were just now starting to understand a little bit and that's where it kind of gets difficult you know i think for a lot of physicians is mm -hmm. you know you have such a small window with your patients how do you get to understand everything that they're doing throughout the day and what Correct. Their, their emotional state and um and so you have to be your own advocate because right. if you don't if you don't sit down and have that conversation with yourself and right. what am i eating and how am i you know how my emotions and and really understanding you um you know, it could just slip right out on from underneath. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yes. Um, yeah. So I guess if, if, if I had to, um, you know, say something, about, you know, re regarding to, you know, preventative reasons, mm -hmm. right? So like you may not have cancer diagnosis sure. or you have it in your family. So you may, may not be thinking about it actively, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but because of just the high levels of toxins, it just right. food supply in just our environment, right. um, you know, living preventatively is very important. And mm -hmm. you know, for people who, you know, when I was raised, I wasn't raised with healthy guidelines and it wasn't kind exactly of that. And so you know, for what would you suggest for people to just to start living a preventative lifestyle? Mm -hmm. um, what What are some things that you would say that you know easy tips and tricks throughout the day to kind of one be become their own advocate from right. preventative, so you don't have to fight at you know when you realize you may have a disease, but beforehand. What are some tips you would tell people? I really focus on superfoods. And I know that word is so annoying because it's so cliche these days. So I am hesitant to say that word. But what I mean with that is that it gives the food power. Um, it gives it that driving force of, okay, I'm going to consume this, but why? So constantly ask yourself, why am I you know, taking this in? Yes, you're bored. Yes, you're starving. You know, those, all those things. But really you should be eating because it's going to fulfill you and nourish you. So can you, when you're running to, you know, to work, are you going to grab some organic berries and some uh, nuts or some nut butters that have like literally just nuts, no salt, no oils, nothing, you know I mean? Can you, can you grab those? Can you grab some, uh, cut up vegetables that are organic as well, like carrots and celery, um, 
I try to make sure that like constantly you're eating raw. I really love to eat raw. Um, and it's super easy. Then there's like no excuses. You know, I didn't have time to meal prep or I didn't have, I didn't, I don't know how to cook or everybody can, for the most part, everyone can wash and cut vegetables um, and just put them in a little container and go. So I focus on antioxidants, anything that can completely block the free radicals or cleanse your body as much as you can um, without getting crazy. I focus on anything like that will, like vitamins. I just like, you know, fo natural vitamins, vitamin K, lots of kale, lots of beans, lots of any, I do focus on plant-based. Right. And I think that's one of the things like that, I, you know, you know, food, the concept of, of food is medicine, right? I mean, that's something I'm super passionate about. Food nerd, obviously, we're, we're very passionate about that. But as the science is starting to come out to show, okay, these antioxidants, like, they're not just these little, these little guys that may help. It's like, no, these things are very powerful. Yes. And um, if you, if you choose to consume them in their raw form, in their, yes. in their whole state, it, it reacts to your body completely different versus if you were to you know, still have that, but then you're going to bake it or deep fry it or do all these other processing to it. And so, um, I love that you say that because, you know, people think like, oh, when I, you know, when I mentioned I eat a high, you know, uh, raw plant-based diet, like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, like, I don't have time for that. It's actually the opposite. It's actually the opposite, right? <laughs> exactly. I don't have time to cook half the time, right? right? Right. I agree. And it's so, I, and everyone would say like, what's your favorite te cooking technique? Or what's your favorite way of preparing something? Steamed, raw? I mean, and I'm, you know, I mean, that's what a chef should say, really. I mean, you're focusing on, again, what you're doing, what you're making. I don't want to douse something in butter. I don't want to fry it. I don't want to. And, and that's where I try to, again, make that a balance in the zest box. Like, I don't want it to be... Um, all about chips and cookies, right? Because that is sometimes practical because it's supposed to be a cleaner option, a cleaner alternative when you're on the go or just really craving something. But I really try to add in the nuts and the seeds. I try to add in the chia, um, the chia overnight pudding. Like I try to make sure that you are still getting them in, in a pantry way mm -hmm. um, and a convenient way, but that hopefully it will spark something and say, okay, so I do like chia see pudding i i'm gonna try more other you know more other more more products with that type of that idea absolutely um so i guess the, the kind of what i wanted to to kind of get into a little bit um just because i find that it it's one of the biggest things that i i you know hear from customers is um i don't know how to cook or i don't mm -hmm. or i don't and i think it's because i think it's because the way that our food has just been cooked and presented the last, you know, four or five decades is that it's, it's either so heightened, um, with salt and MSG, right. different, these different additives that people think that their food tastes bland if they make it from home, but that's just the way that food should taste and the way that we've kind of manipulated and heightened. I was just going to say that they've altered their palate and their taste buds and they've manipulated it. Absolutely. So as you know, and, and I love it that, that you're a chef because it's, it, it reminds us that, okay, you know, it, our cooking at home isn't, isn't broken. You're, you could be a great chef. Anybody mm -hmm. could be a great chef. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of, you know, you go, you have to kind of go through this period. And I know I went through it and I still go through it. Sometimes I'll have something that's just, you know, like a, a vegan like cake at a birthday party. And it's just so sweet. And I, right. because right. I haven't had that refined Absolutely. sugar in so long, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. when you're used to eating those foods and, and we also don't realize that you mentioned before, like flours and things that are refined, they're mm -hmm. heightened glucose, right? So you right. get that rush and, um, and then you're addicted to it. You're addicted to it. Absolutely. Like you're chemically addicted mm -hmm. to it. And so, you know, understanding that it's, you are an incredible chef. You don't have to know any of these fancy things. You just go right. back to nature. Back to basics, back to nature, a hundred percent. And, you know, being able to just, you know, accept that, you know, that, that cabbage, that broccoli, that carrot isn't going to taste like some very heightened version that you'd find out. at a, Right. Uh, I, I always say, check the ego. <laughs> because your health should come first. It should, absolutely. You know, I mean, there's a, like I said, a lot of times I would, I want to go to someone's house or someone's coming to my house and I want to cook them this gourmet meal. 
But then I'm thinking, but that's not something that I would love to eat. And I wouldn't want my, you know, the person that comes into my home, I love them. So I don't want to make something for them that I wouldn't make for myself. So, you know, everyone says, so the most, the most notorious question that I've received as a chef, what do you eat? What does your husband eat? He must eat so well. Like they think he has like filet mignon every night. And, you know, I don't even, I don't even know what they think. My kid is we eat chicken we eat you know for my, for my kids and my, my husband eat like grilled chicken and we have steamed broccoli every night one you know we'll do some beans we'll do some greens it's very simple it's quick because i don't have the time as well but it's healthy mm -hmm. and that's the i love that you say that you know like the check your ego because i think that what that kind of infers and i, I want to get kind of deep here with this <laughs> it's like um you know i think for my experience is really like, you know, I always say like, you know, feed self love. And we think of like, right. we justify eating bad foods because you're like, oh, I deserve this. Yeah, mm. I've had this moment, but it's actually like, I've come to realize it's the opposite. Mm. It's really like, actually, I deserve this nutrition. And so I want to, instead of when I'm emotionally trying to, to satiate myself, I, I, I turn to ice cream, I turn to these different mm. foods. Um, it's, I'll actually like stop and check myself and be like, okay, what is, what is really a self-loving act right now? Even though right. I may be sad or I may be stressed, mm -hmm. not reaching for that food that I think is going to distract me from whatever I'm dealing with. It's actually the opposite. It's actually like you deserve more nutrients right now because clearly my body is stressed. So eating something bad in a moment of stress does worse, right? Than you think it would. And so it's like, you know, and that's what I'm, you know, I, I, it's like hard to explain that of, you know, it's like, we all have this, we've, I think it has so much to do with the marketing in the industry. We've been Absolutely. sold like indulge yourself and they show women like eating chocolate. Like it's like my me time. But at the same time, like I have found so much more self-love and like connection and like taking a shot of wheat grass, right. Even though it's, it's not, it, it's really, I mean, it's not going to taste like chocolate, but after like that moment of like knowing I just made it's decision. empowering. It's empowering. I mean, you're decision. taking control of your health. Mm -hmm. And again, that's, that's the, what I try to say is you have no control over any diagnosis. I could continue the path of plant-based and, and eat as healthy as I will ever want to try. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I will not get cancer again. And I have to still worry about all this, my secondary cancers that I could get. Mm -hmm. And so that always plays in the back of my mind. But again, it's about why, why are you consuming something? So yes, I love that. I love that. And that's, you know, going, you know, I think that's the most, one of the most powerful questions that we can always ask, especially with food, like why? why? You know, and the other thing I was, you know, thinking about as I was thinking about, you know, working on this, on this podcast with you is, you know, when you, when you are in the moment, you know, as humans, it's just our nature. We take it day by day. And like, you know, yesterday I may have not eaten healthy, but it's kind of out of my mind, right? Mm -hmm. like it gets the path. So when I'm, when you're in a moment, um, you, you're kind of just like, oh, today is a day and today I'm really stressed. So I deserve this bad food, but you don't realize that each of those days just build and build. It's cumulative. It's cumulative. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, like it's right. a month, four months, three years, five years of not taking care of yourself. And right. it's, that's where it's like, you know, kind of like you said, checking your ego and stepping back and saying, okay, you know, put it into a picture. Like right. if, if I look back in 10 years of my life and I say, did I, did I, for the most part, you know, we can even throw, throw the 80, 20 rule out. Right. Yes, the most yes. part, did I make self-loving, you know, decisions with my food? A hundred percent. Most of us, you know, most of us would probably say I didn't, right? Because I was right. so in, I was so just in the daily instead of thinking about myself or my kids or my grandkids or mm -hmm. the impact. I feel it. like everyone is in survival mode. Mm -hmm. You know, they're trying to get from point A to point B and just making sure that they get there alive. You know, like they're not, it's, there's a difference between being alive and living. And so I want to always live. That's the whole point of zest spots, having a zest for life. You, there's no reason to do all this, to eat healthy or to work out or to educate yourself or to work really hard. But for what? Like, what are you doing that for? Are you doing that to have a prosperous life or you're just doing that to 
to get from point A to point B. You know, like I just, I need to I'll, I'll focus on meal prep next week um, or whatever it is. But it's like, I, I listen, I have to get, fr I have to get till Friday. And then on Friday, you know, maybe I can um, not eat as well, right? Like, so let me just eat salad, 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 salads. And then you're starving and you're gonna not eat so well by the nighttime and then weekends come and you're like, well, I deserve it. I had, you know, a week of really doing well. And again, it's fine. Like you can treat yourself, but it's not about that. It's like it, the longer picture, like you said, why are we doing this? And having that different relationship with food that it's a vehicle for your health but to thrive, like you're thriving uh, for that moment to have the ice cream, it's a moment. But in my opinion, I want a million moments. I want every moment and I want the ones that matter the most. So it sounds really corny, but when I was going through treatment, every time I would have to do a scan, I would try to close my eyes and envision being somewhere else because that's what got me to understand why I was doing what I was doing. So there's moments that I'd close my eyes and I would think of uh, dress, dress shopping with my daughter for her wedding, or I would think of dancing with my son at his wedding. Like there's certain moments, my daughter's high college graduation, you know, and I would close my eyes and envision being there. And so I think when it becomes a lifestyle for someone, if they feel overwhelmed, then they should close their eyes and understand why or what they're trying to envision for themselves as a life and think that's why, right? So the ice cream is great and we could all have ice cream totally fine. Not, not shaming anyone. I love ice cream. But what I'm saying is that moment that you had that ice cream, but, and it builds up and it's cumulative. Are they taking away the bigger moments? You know, you could still be with your family. You can still celebrate. I'm still celebrating a lot of people. You know, if I go out to a restaurant and say, we're going to go to a barbecue place, like whatever, that's just an example. And I remember everyone getting the most crazy unhealthiest items but I was still having a great time. You know, I ordered something that I felt happy with at that moment. It was like a steamed vegetable, like a veggie burger kind of thing with some steamed broccoli. And I was good. And everyone looked at me like, are you crazy? Like we're in the moment, like just live it up. And I'm, I'm still living and I want to live. Right. So it's not about what's on that plate except that it, that, that will create the life for me. The food is the medicine that will create my life forever for long term. It's not just about that. I still had a great time with all my friends while they were eating their barbecue. You know, that didn't make it any less fun. And I thought, you know what, when I leave here, I'm going to feel even better because now I don't feel sluggish because I don't eat this normally. I'm not going to feel like, like a headache or, or migraine. Like, and it's, I'm going to feel great. So if anything, I felt better probably after everybody <laughs> that next day. That's amazing. I love the way you said that because it's something that like, you know, I'm, I'm super passionate about. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to start the podcast too. It's just like understanding that like, it's a moment. Like when you're, you're in the moment when you're eating, it's, it's such a fleeting like amount of time. Like it's mm -hmm. bizarre. And half the time we're eating and our thoughts are somewhere else. So you're not oh, yes. present with the food. So we're choosing bad food to eat. Um, and not just bad food, but food that can be just laden with toxins, right? Or just harmful, just super harmful. And then half the time you're, you're stressed or you think about something else and you're not even fully there. And then it's, it's gone. And you know, you could eat a lot of really bad calories really quickly. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, Oh, that moment's gone. It, it's right. literally gone. And so right. it's like, you know, I have that same experience where I'll, I'll, I'll go out with friends and I'll, I'll get the giant salad and I'll, right. and, I'll and I'll get, you know, like steamed, you know, I'll, sometimes, I, you know, as, as a vegan, I'll go to restaurants and mm -hmm. the only thing they have is like a side of steamed vegetables. And I'm like, right. give me four. Right. <laughs> like, right. Fill me up. Fill me up. Right. Give me a tower of vegetables. And people are like, what? Because right. I'm really enjoying the people I'm having the dinner with. It, that's a hundred percent what I'm trying to say. Right. And, and that's like, you know, I think that, you know, think how there's people, you know, like you that understand it too, because I think that that message needs to be said more of right. like loving through the healthy food instead of it being a punishment. And that's mm -hmm. where it's like, it makes me so sad where people are like, oh, when they find out how healthy, how healthy I love to eat, they're like, oh, like that sucks. <laughs> right. Like, right. Like, they, they're like, they feel pity or like, they feel like I'm really, oh, you must be miserable. Like, yeah. no, I'm actually not. I'm pretty lively, you know, or whatever. And it's, and it's, you know, and it's also like, 
the other, the science side of it is when you eat the healthier food, you, you are so satiated because you actually got the nutrients, right? So you're not, once the food is gone, you're not thinking about food. You're, you're just in the moment, you're present where, you know, when I would eat bad food before, like you could just eat a ton of it and then you're stuffed like where you need to go pass out. And then an hour later, you're like, where's the other half of the pizza? Right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm still hungry. And so right, I, right. it's, um, yeah, I just love the, I love the way you were that. I'm actually like afterwards, I can already see myself like wanting mm-hmm. to brainstorm, like it's just a moment, you know, like try to put it together um, mm-hmm. and try to like rewatch this and write down what you said, because it was just perfectly worded of like, Thanks. it's, it's the opposite of what we think, you know, it really is. Um, and um, you know, uh, something else I wanted to talk to you about, um, mm-hmm. is you have to, you have children. So you yes. have all this, you have all this, um, you know, the tools that you have to, to cook and eat healthy. Mm-hmm. Tell us about what it's like, you know, raising kids and yeah, tell us all about it. <laughs> it's, 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 I will be honest. It's hard because what I want for them and what they fight f- for it's, it's two different things. You know, I would love for them to have the, you know a whole variety of steamed vegetables for dinner or raw vegetables or for lunch you know take some carrots take some apples right but i'm constantly not only do they not want to maybe try something because they'll try it at home but they don't want to try it at school but they don't want to take it to school i should say and that stresses me out and actually i have a very good friend who i feel like you have a friend for everything and this friend is my mom that um you know she's like my organic vegan mom that i can talk to her about and she just gets it you know she says she sends her kids just like i to school and the kids are really like same thing like that the experience that i had at the barbecue place like they the kids are hating on my you know my kids and then so they, make, they make you feel bad so my child is obviously does not want to no longer take the carrot sticks anymore. And they don't want to take the apple chips, you know, the, the sliced apples. They don't want to take the wow butter because you can't have nut butter, whatever. Like they, they, they don't want to, it's not cool. It's not yeah. cool to be healthy. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. And it's really stressful as a mom because I try to sometimes take my daughter aside because she's a little older so I can talk to her. Um, you know, we're in a very Italian family. And so old school Italian, you have the fork, the knife, and the bread. You know, it's like really stressful because in my family, we didn't have that. And so trying to have my daughter understand that if it's around you, it seems really cool now. But just understand like why I don't, I don't, it's I, the word that I always use is healthy. Is it healthy? So I try to put that little, those seeds in there to say, why are you still eating that? You can have this, but make sure you've filled up on your protein, all your veg, make sure you had some sweet potato. And then if you want to have a little bit of it, that's fine. And I'm not trying to get into her head at an early age and think of like bad food, you know, good food, Mm -hmm. but I want her to understand that some people just don't know what they don't know. And so I just don't want her to get into that path or I don't want my kids to think, listen, it's not cool to eat healthy. And so I want McDonald's like all my friends. It's hard when you want to have a birthday party. And my friend said, you know, I made all these cupcakes and they had like vegan frosting and they were all organic. You know, anytime my kids hear organic, they're like, oh, I'm not even trying it. You know, it's like there's this negative stigma that I'm constantly trying to to work through and to kind of push through because there aren't a lot of kids in, in our circle, we have like a really healthy circle. There's like a handful of kids that are healthy, that they're, you know, their parents really care. And so I kind of just hang out with those because I feel like it's easier because if my kids see, you know, Bob and Sally, they're eating, you know, avocado and carrot sticks. It's, it's just easier. It's, mm-hmm. There's no fight if there's no fight. So that's, if that's why I feel like it's hard of that balanced. It's cool to eat healthy. Like, why is it a bad thing? I, so- I don't know. That's so funny that say that because that's one of my first memories I have of, of having this visceral response to food actually was in school. I, I must have been maybe fourth or fifth grade. I was young. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember having everybody, you know, having the Lunchables and it was so cool. Right. Right. Like the mega, yes. you remember like oh, the I know. big pack? Oh, I know. Um, and I just, I remember the commercials. I remember right. like just the heavy marketing that this was like cool. And there was always a candy bar. There was yeah, lean cuisine or kids food. cuisine was the other one. Yes. That's so bad. And I remember sitting at the, at the lunch table and literally like w- wanting so badly to like 
traded. No one wanted my food. No right. one wanted it. And it's really, it's really unfortunate because, mm-hmm. you know, and that's one of the things that is the downside of just the marketing loss here in the U S right. Is that mm. companies can market very heavily to kids. So you see the go and you see all these like right. really processed, you know, fruit roll-ups and all these right. horrible so things. Sugar and chemicals and fakeness. Yeah. Right. And, you know, once a kid sees that, I mean, in they're being advertised so much more on social mm-hmm. media, it's, it's this really unfortunate thing because kids now, like you just said, they start to, in their mind, link healthy foods to not cool, not, not you know, not fun. They're kind of ashamed of it. They don't want right. to bring it or they rather not eat or they rather like hide. Right. They rather mm-hmm. throw it out and then at school, like get something that's unhealthy. Right. And that's where like, you know, I, I have a lot of nieces and nephews and, and um, friends with kids and they'll say, you know, um, I thought my kid was eating their healthy lunch. I was eating right. every day, right. but they were throwing it out and they mm-hmm. were getting unhealthy things. And that's right. just like, it's unfortunate because that's mm-hmm. honestly, that's, that's not the parent's fault. That's the industry. Exactly. And it's, it's almost like an uphill battle. I remember one time, I, you have to give, um, it's like an e-pay for my kids in school. And so I remember I put enough money in each of their accounts and then very like two, three weeks later, it, I got an email, you need to replenish. And I'm thinking, I make my kids my, their lunch, like what, you know, there must be something wrong. And anyway, I called the school and said, I think there's a mistake. I don't know. And they said, Oh no, 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 your, your son's here every day. And I said, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> okay. And um, so I had looked, I went online and there were Doritos, Cheez-Its, like fruit snacks, um, apple juice, like literally daily. And then ice cream sandwiches, like daily, both children. It wasn't even, <laughs> it was both. So once one got wind of it, obviously the other one's like, well, the heck with this, I, I can know how to play the system. And so um, I actually then had to call the school again and then, and, and say, please, um, you know, not, my child's not allowed to take these. Mm-hmm. And so I, and I got, and I got a lot of slack from my kids for that, but then I got a phone call. My, my child tried to take someone's marshmallow. You know, it's like, it's hard because you're constantly trying and you mean well, but there has to be that balance as a parent that there's a time and a place. So if, if 80, 90% of the time, for breakfast, for most lunches, my kid's going to take, and then uh, lunch and dinner, breakfast and lunch. Sorry. If most of the time for breakfast and dinner, they're with me and they're eating really well and their snacks are really great. And then they go to school with the healthy lunches and I'm trying my best and they do that. There's only so much. You don't want to put like, again, that negative, that negative relationship with food. Or sometimes, like you said, they want it so bad that they will be in the corner somewhere. Like, I don't want my kid now stealing someone's marshmallow, like going, right. you know, I don't, I don't want to be the, my kid to be that kid. Right. So there has to be that balance. So I tried to be a little bit more um, like, Hey, let's have pizza Fridays. Or, you know, when you, when you have a, a great full week of school, you can have the ice cream. So unfortunately it becomes that treat and the treat is that unhealthy item. Right. But I think as a parent, it's, it's more of a setting an example. So as the more that I do, and they see that and they hear me, I think as they get older, they'll start to kind of turn. So I think no matter what, just be the example. Right. Be the example. No, that's, that's, and you know, it's just a, it's just a crazy thought to think that, why do our schools have ice cream in there? <laughs> this is what I don't understand too. And I'm thinking like, okay, now I want to be the director of my kid's school because I, I thought that we were like way past that. This was something right. that everybody was working on it's really confusing to me. So I I don't know. And again, I think it becomes a marketing, you know, I Mm -hmm. I think most kids would not, they'd probably boycott lunch. I don't know. So it's unfortunate. But you know, more parents that send the kids in with apple slices, right? (laughs) We should do a whole marketing campaign that, you know, cool kids eating apple slices. Yes. Yes. Um, Wow. Yeah. And you know, I think that's, you know, one kind of one of the cool things about uh, just about your product as well is that, you know, if you have these really cool different snack items that are just your, any parent can just grab and throw in their right. kid's lunch. You know, exactly. it's, it's like it's like said trying to do the little things to set yourself up for success. Exactly. Um, and you know, I think that if you can a support a local business and you can right. also 
get healthy products out of it and it, you're, you're saving, you know, time and, and money and you're, you're, you're making it, you know, fun and exciting. It, it makes all of those little headaches throughout the day a little bit better. And so, um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm just, you know, I think that what you're doing is, is incredible. And I, and I hope, I hope a lot of people try it out. Um, and I think one of the coolest things that I would love to receive, you know, is receive this as a gift, send this to somebody exactly that, you know, just as like a surprise, I think in a, in a, in COVID world that we live in right now, um, something extra and, you know, in the mail that will save you a trip to the store and that right. will brighten your day. And right. we, we know how, what yellow does to anybody. It just makes right? you smile. <laughs> exactly. And, that, and that's really all it is about, right? It doesn't have to be for you monthly. That's okay too. But instead of getting another Amazon gift card, you know, like, they can get their, their battery somewhere else. Like, I mean, just send them something that will just brighten their day, make them feel good. And maybe you never know, they might try something new and then it might spark something long-term for them. So you actually will be doing them, you know, more, more than you think. That's awesome. Awesome. So I guess if, if there's anything that you, you know, want to say to anybody that's listening or anybody that's, you know, maybe, um, and that, that is, undergoing treatment now or that may be you know in a place where you know you can really connect with them and, and this your product can help bring a little extra joy um you know what is something that you want to you want to tell people about it i always say just keep swimming that has been my motto since for the last eight years since i've been sick and it is always jks just keep swimming so we all no matter what it is it's on my box. It's I see. It now. Yeah. That's what I was like. It's the back GKS. there. Yes. Okay. The GKS I see is the lemon. Um, and then there's the 0316, which is the barcode that's on. It's supposed to be like a lemon box, um, the barcode. But 0316 is March 16th. That's my stem cell transplant. So that's my new birthday. So the box is just something that I want to send to someone just to remind them just to keep swimming. So we all have really hard days, obviously, right now, probably more than ever. But you just don't have to wait until a diagnosis or anything serious like that to brighten someone's day or to make them realize that life is too short and just keep swimming and you'll get there. Just have a zest for life. I love it. Okay. So if you could tell everybody um, where they can um, try your box out and then also tell us where your social medias are at so they can reach out to you. So it's pretty simple. So it's my zestbox.com and my handles are my zestbox and it's everywhere, you know, same name everywhere. It's easy. Lucky you. <laughs> so, um, so everyone listening, make sure to to check out Danielle and her company and send a little joy to yourself and someone else. Um, but Danielle, thank you so much. We super thank appreciate you. you. So on. appreciate you. Um, and everybody who joined us, thank you so much for joining in on another episode of Raw Conversations. Uh, if you share our mission for food truth, uh, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and visit foodnerdinc.com for more helpful tips and information. And until next time, nerd on. Thank <laughs> you.